International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vivian Poe. I'm the Communications Director for Assessor Carmen Chu. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here and would like to introduce our host for tonight, Assessor Carmen Chu. She's the only Asian American assessor across the state of California. And she's definitely one of our women leaders in the city. So may I present Assessor Carmen Chu. Hello. Welcome everybody to San Francisco's Women Equality Day kickoff. I don't know if folks know what the history of Women's Equality Day is, but it is to simply do this, to remember and to celebrate when women fought for the right to vote and the passage of the 19th Amendment. I tried remembering the first time that I voted, and I think I must have just turned 18 at the time, and when I started to do the ballot, you know, fill out the ballot and to vote, I remember thinking, I don't know any of these people, I don't know any of these measures, and I don't think that that was something that was unusual for someone who came from an immigrant family who I think my parents never voted until after I voted, actually. And so it's one of these things when I say, when we think about why it's so important to vote, it's because we have the opportunity to vote for people who represent us in government, whether it's local government or all the way to the highest level in our federal government, because these individuals pass laws and they make decisions that govern how we live our lives, who we can marry, the air we breathe. And so that's why today I'm so proud to be here to kick off not only Women's Equality Day, but also the W Challenge. So what is the W Challenge? I want everybody to go when you can today to wchallenge.org. The goal is simple. It's to raise women's voices, to show that across the city, across issues, across ideology, we are united when it comes to getting women out to vote and the importance of getting women to vote. The way it works is this. We can all do something about this. We each individually not only pledge to vote, but we pledge to get one more woman registered to vote and bring one more woman with us to the ballots. So. With that, I'd love to introduce our next speaker. She is no stranger to paving the way and fighting for our values, our San Francisco values. She was the first woman to serve as Speaker of the House in US history, our Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much, Carmen. It's an honor to be with, here with you and so many women leaders in our community. Thank you for bringing us together. Madam Mayor, honored to be with you. Madam Mayor, I, I was recalling on the way here when Carmen was a supervisor, uh, Assessor Chu was a supervisor. We walked her, her district and with Katie Yang, who would then become the supervisor. <laughs> so Katie, nice to see you too. Congratulations, Carmen. Look at these women. London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco. <laughs> Carmen Chu, the... Uh, the assessor, the assessor of our city, Carmen Chu. And Katie, I mentioned Katie Tang, supervisor. She was a staff person then, then on to the supervisor, following in uh, Carmen's wonderful footsteps. Uh, we'll be joined by, uh, we are joined by the sheriff, Katie, Hem Hen Vicki Hennessy. We're so blessed in our community with so many wonderful leaders, and you'll hear from more. Uh, Debbie Meslow from the Commission on the Status of Women. The list goes on and on. But here we are, the W Challenge, challenging women to vote. It's just a fact. When you don't vote, you don't count, and your views are not taken into consideration. So thank you, Carmen, for bringing us together for this challenge. And it's so important as we come together the 98th anniversary of women having the right to vote. At the time when this happened, they said women given the right to vote. No, women weren't given anything. Women weren't given. It was women fought, marched, 
starved, were starved, defied their families, did everything to be recognized, to be recognized so that women could have the right to vote. We stand on their shoulders. So we have to continue the fight for equal pay, for equal work, and Lily Ledbetter and all those kinds of things. And women are, some, are very much about families and keeping families together. And we do not want families separated by immigration policy that we do not agree with, and we don't want families separated by gun violence. And that's why it's such an honor to be here with Maddie Scott. Uh, she has turned her grief of her son's murder into a decade-long decade -long fight to confront the tragedy of gun violence. You are such an incredible leader. Thank you for inspiring us so. Yeah. Especially today, because just this morning we lost a cherished member of our community, Joe Tehechoe, or better known as Brother Juno. We need the voices of America's women so that, uh, uh, so that when we take power, we will pass laws that will protect and keep families together, not separated by gun violence. And I'm glad that a supervisor, Catherine Stefani, who has worked before began, becoming a supervisor, worked so much on this gun issue. So very, very important. So votes matter because it determines policy, and policy matters. Thank you again, Maddie. Now, I know when we leave here, we're going to march over there to the library and have a seminar on how women can be more appointed to commissions and boards and elective office and the rest. So I thought I'd tell you this story. It was a long time ago. My children were little. I was in my home getting ready for dinner, and I get a call from the mayor of San Francisco, Joe Alioto. He says, uh, what are you doing, Nancy, making a big pot of pasta? I said, no, Mayor, I'm reading the New York Times. And <laughs> so, but it, here's the point. He called to ask me because my kids and I always volunteered at the San Francisco Library, where you're going next. And he called to ask me, and he said, I know you love the library. Will you serve? I'm calling to appoint you as a library commissioner. Well, to which I said, typical of my era, oh, that's okay, Mr. Mayor, I'll do the work without being a commissioner. <laughs> we love the library, we'll just go do that. Now, he was not known as a great feminist, but he did say, never say that, no man would say that, get official recognition for what you do. You get official recognition for what you do. It was true then, it's true now. Hi, Chief. But the f point was, I, I really thought, well, we're going to volunteer anyway. But when you get on the commission, you have a vote. People want to know what you think. We started bringing our commission meetings into the neighborhoods. It was a big thing. You can make a difference with your fresh new ideas, especially uh, realizing how bringing it closer to home was important to families. So I'm so happy that there will be, even now, a need, but also an opportunity for women to learn more about why it's important that they get official recognition for what they do. Who knows? Library commissioner, speaker of the house, who knows? <laughs> So in any event, proud to represent a city that recognizes the power of women. Know your power, women. But when we talk about a vote on a commission or a vote at the polls, that is what is really important. So thank you, Carmen, uh, for bringing us together for the W Challenge. They, there's nothing more wholesome for our country, for our political process, for our government, than the increased participation of women in leadership yes. in the political system. We owe it to the suffragettes, that's why I'm on purple and white, we owe it to the suffragettes standing on their shoulders to advance the cause even further. Thank you all very much. <laughs> She is, she is and always will be our leader. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
speaking of folks to recognize, I do want to make sure that I'm recognized the League of Women Voters of San Francisco and of course the Department of Status of Women led by Emily Marase, who's my co-sponsors in this. There are many people who are joining us and I'll definitely will be recognize you as we go, uh, but I do want to make sure to bring up our Mayor London Breed. This next person I think needs no introduction. She seems to rise to every single challenge thrown in her way. As a young girl, she was raised by her grandmother. She grew up in public housing. She challenged herself to make history our city's newest mayor, Mayor London Breed. Here in San Francisco, we are so fortunate. We have some of the most amazing leaders anywhere. Yes. They just all happen to be women. <laughs> Leader Pelosi paving the way, fighting the good fight in Washington, D.C. every single day a challenge against a terrible president. She stands tall, she stands proud, she stands fearless while she's simultaneously stirring a pot of pasta. <laughs> That's our leader. Yeah. Amazing, fearless, and standing strong. And yes, Carmen Chu, I accept the W challenge. Because it shouldn't take more than 30 years for us to elect the second woman mayor of the city and county of San Francisco. Here in our city, we have a woman mayor. We have a woman president of the Board of Supervisors with seven of the 11 members that are women. The presiding judge here in San Francisco is a woman. So many leaders, our city administrator, so many incredible people. In fact, my first two major appointments, District 5 Supervisor Valley Brown, a woman. Ivy Lee to the Community College Board, a woman. Women who get the job done. Women who focus on doing the work. And let me just be clear, to all the men we still love and need you. <laughs> Trust and believe that. But we are so fortunate that so many incredible women commissioners, so many incredible women step up to the plate and run for office and put themselves out there to do what's necessary to get the job done. But we have more work to do. We all know the challenges of what we face here in the city and county of San Francisco. The conversations around mental illness, the conversations around substance abuse, the things we need to do to build more housing, we know we have work to do, which is why we have to do everything we can to get women registered to vote, to get out the vote, to elect women, to appoint women, and do all we can to support one another. And it won't be easy, but we can get the job done. Behind me, I can name so many amazing women Commander Mannix, who basically was a captain at Northern Police Station and is now commander in the police department. Maddie Scott, who was mentioned earlier. Other commissioners and people who continue to step up to the plate and lead and do the right thing on behalf of the residents of our city and our country. We are definitely a place of wealth of knowledge and incredible women. And today, as we celebrate Women Equality Day, we think about what we need to do to work harder to get to a better place. So Carmen Chu, thank you for putting us up to the task. We got work to gun. Women, let's get it done. Thank you. Yes. Speaking of, of love to our allies, I do want to recognize Supervisor Asha Safai, who's joined us today. Oh, yes. He's going to be speaking. <laughs> He's hanging out with the girls up here. He's going to be speaking at the panel later, so we want to, of course, welcome him and thank him for joining us. Our Small Business Commissioner, Irene Yee Riley, Commissioner Sonia Malara, our City Administrator, Naomi Kelly, who's here, our Chief, Joanne Hayes-White, who's here, and many, many others who are here. The next speaker is an amazing, amazing legislator. She shows gut and courage. She works across the aisle to pass policies to build more housing for working families. She's done so much and brought news to the city, good news. 
to expand parental benefits, but also lactation policies here locally in San Francisco. It truly is a model for the nation, and I want to welcome Supervisor Katie Tang up to the podium. Thank you so much, Assessor Chu, her entire team, the Department of Status of Women, and I want to thank her sister, Cindy Chu, here also. She designed this fabulous logo here that has a lot of meaning behind it for this W Challenge, so thank you, Cindy. Um, I was actually just talking to uh, my friend Viva Mogi, I don't know if she's still here, but from the school district, and one thing that, uh, in, in, yes, there is Viva. Um, so one thing that I definitely want to do and work with her and the school district on is that now we can also pre-register our young students uh, to be able to vote. So we want to do that for our 16, 17 year olds and begin them on an early pass to remember to vote. Now when Carmen brought this challenge to us, uh, there was a statistic that was shared, which was that California ranks third in terms of the top number of women who are not registered to vote, right? That is hard to believe. I didn't know that before. And that is a statistic that I do not think that Californians want to be a part of. We don't want to rank high in that. So let's change the landscape of that. A lot has been said about the importance of getting people to vote. So let's get out there and thank you again for bringing attention to this because I think we all know we have to do this, but sometimes we really have to be hit over the heads or be reminded about it. So thank you, Carmen. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Tang. Some more folks who have joined us, of course, Commissioner Julie Su, Claudine Chang, Global SF Director Darlene Chu, Recology General Manager Minna Tao. I mean, this is pretty important. We've got a woman who is leading a general manager at Recology. And a big deal. And of course, again, our male allies, our controller, Ben Rosenfield is here as well. Thank you very much, Ben, for being here. Now the next speaker is someone who has been a leader in common sense gun control laws far before she was ever a legislator here in San Francisco, something that is much too important for our communities. She is someone who is a steadfast uh, person to lead the commi her commitment to creating safe communities for all of our families. I want to welcome one of our newest members of the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Catherine Stefani. Thank you, Carmen, and I too accept the W Challenge. It's such an honor to be here with so many incredible women, with Leader Pelosi, my eMERGE sister, Mayor London Breed, I'll never get tired of saying that, Supervisor Katie Tang, and so many other uh, incredible women and our men too that help us along the way. Um, I was thinking the other day, you know, my daughter, she's nine years old, and she is absolutely obsessed with Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And every night, she reads out of this little blue book that says, there's no truth without Ruth. And we were, t we were talking about the challenges that we face, and sometimes how it's really hard to overcome like what we see on the streets with homelessness and mental illness, and, and, how, and how we have to work so incredibly hard at these issues. And we were talking about the women's right to vote and how long that took. It took us over 100 years. We didn't just get the right to vote, like Leader Pelosi said. We had to really work so hard for that right to vote. And 98 years later, we're still fighting for equal representation and equal pay and equal treatment. So, you know, for my nine-year-old daughter, these are lessons that we talk about every night. And it's one of the reasons why I've picked up legislation that Supervisor Farrell was um, sponsoring, which is to have more of our female representatives in our public art. Um, we want women, you know, we want, our, we want more symbols of women for our children to look up, look up to. And one of the reasons why we are, you know, putting forward a statue of Dr. Maya Angelou. And it's something that I'm really looking forward to doing, and we're going to be doing that this fall. But one other thing I was thinking about, too, on, I'll never forget, January 4th, 2007, I was on the treadmill at the JCC watching Leader Pelosi, then Congresswoman P Pelosi, being sworn in as the first woman to become the Speaker of the House. And I was on that treadmill for like two hours. I have to thank you for that workout because I... <laughs> I could not stop watching, and I will never forget when she was there with all the children around her, and she said, the house will come to order with the gavel. And then two, year, two years later, I was in eMERGE, I was in my eMERGE class at the California Democratic Convention, and Speaker Pelosi was there, and we had signs that said, Madam Speaker, and I was pregnant with my daughter, my daughter Gigi. And, you know, 
she is nine now, and she is watching me in my role as supervisor. She is watching me run for office, and she is watching me do it in a pantsuit. And I say that because even in my time when I was a trial lawyer, I was told that I needed to wear skirts to trial, even in my time. So I'm happy that my daughter gets to see me do all this in a pantsuit, because it does matter. Because Nancy O'Malley, the DA in Al Alameda County, once said, if you're not at the table, I'll wait. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And if you're not voting as a woman, you're on the menu. If you're not, if you're not at the table, they're talking about reproductive rights without you. If you're not at the table, they're talking about gun violence prevention without you, and that affects your children. If you're not at the table, they're talking about child care and access to health care and access to education without you. So you have to vote. You have to encourage your friends to vote. And you have to run for office if you're a woman. So I am so excited to be here today. And I can't wait to vote on November 6th. And I can't wait to cast a vote for myself. Thank you. <laughs> If I lived in District 2, too, I would, too. <laughs> to close out on our challenge, again, I just want to encourage everybody to remember, please go to wchallenge.org, sign up, pledge to vote, pledge to bring one more woman to the polls with you, register one more woman to go vote. It really does matter, so please make sure to do that. To close out again, I want to invite our wonderful partners up, uh, Debbie Meslow, who is the president of the Commission on the Status of Women, as well as Leah Edwards, the president of the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. I just wanted to say quickly that I am inviting everyone on November 6th to Ladies' Night because I know that when women vote, women control the agenda. And when women control the agenda, we will have equal pay. We will have paid leave. We will have more women ascending in leadership, just like our great women leaders here. I really want to thank our great assessor, Carmen Chu, for issuing this challenge. I, too, accept it. I want to thank our incredible mayor, Mayor London Breed. She talked about her first appointments as women. We salute her and appreciate that. And, of course, our great leader, Nancy. Nancy Pelosi, who's done so much for women in this city. So thank you so much for coming, and thank you, um, Assessor Carmen True, for this challenge. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much to everyone for being here today. I'm from, uh, my name is Leah Edwards. I'm with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, and we are honored to be a part of this collaboration for Women's Equality Day. Securing... Uh, we. Women's Equality Day is really, really important because it commemorates the adoption of the 19th Amendment nearly 100 years ago, when women first secured the right to vote. Securing this right was not easy. It took 75 years of fighting and ultimately was only made possible by tens of thousands of women who organized and advocated so that half of the population could have their voice heard. While this might seem like it was a long time ago, citizens across the country continue to face barriers to voting in the form of voter ID laws, reduced polling hours in communities of color, and purging voters from uh, voting rolls. There's still a lot more work to be done to ensure that everybody is able to exercise their right to vote. While voting remains a national problem, low turnout is perhaps an even greater one. There are millions of people who are registered to vote but don't ultimately cast their ballots for many reasons. In the last election in San Francisco in June 2018, voter turnout was 52.6%. So there is still a huge opportunity to get everyone out to the polls and voting. That is why we are here today to urge each of you to vote, to get a friend to vote, and to make sure that your voice is heard in the upcoming election. Voting is one of the only is one of many ways to become civically engaged. So we're also very excited for our panel after uh, this over at the library where you can learn about how to get elected to boards and commissions in San Francisco. In the meantime, we urge you to take part in the W Challenge. Um, like I said, it's really easy. You just vote, get a friend to vote, and help share your story. And I would like to kick this off by inviting uh, Carmen Chu up to be the first to sign the pledge. Thank you. <laughs> So as our women leaders are signing the pledge, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partner organizations who helped us put this together and outreaching this event to every communities in the city.